Welcome to Craftcore, my crafting and DIY channel, and welcome to my cubicle. Well, my cubicle from before my work instituted a work from home directive, I really do miss my cube because I spent quite some time customizing my workspace. I figure if you're going to be spending over eight hours a day somewhere, it should feel personalized and inviting. In this video, I'm going to show you my cubicle and how I customize it to my liking on a tight budget of under $20. Let's dive right into it. The first thing you'll notice is that I have wallpaper. It's actually just wrapping paper, which is great for this temporary application. I'm using two coordinating prints, and both rolls were found at Dollarama. The hardest part of this cubicle makeover was actually finding prints that didn't look like a kid's birthday party. These two prints together have a very mature feel. To attach the wrapping paper to the soft cubicle walls, I used a few packs of sewing pins. You can also get these cheap from the dollar store. I will be giving you some wallpaper tips at the end of this video, so keep on watching. For the sewing pins, make sure you get them with the little balls on the heads so that it will securely hold the paper in place. You don't want to use them little metal ones that have no end because it'll just pop right through your paper. You will see the balls of the pins if you look close enough, so you'll want to color coordinate your pins with the wrapping paper if at all possible. Alternatively, you could use push pins. Transparent would be best because push pins are significantly larger than the sewing pins. So, so far, budget-wise, we're looking at two rolls of wrapping paper. This cost me $4, and a package of sewing pins was $3. I found these great art cards at Ikea a long time ago. Their art cards are a great way to get a variety of coordinating prints at a low price. The frames are from the dollar store. My favorite thing in my cubicle is this magnet status board that I found at Treasure Hunt. Am I at home? Am I at work? Am I at lunch? I also use a lot of books to decorate my space, and they also act as a constant reminder that I should be reading more on my lunch break. I also use books as a monitor stand in order to get my monitor to be the exact right height for ergonomic purposes. Everything else on my desk is just little knickknacks that I've had on hand and not purposely purchased for the cubicle makeover. So for my decor budget, I'm looking at about $5 for, for the frames, a dollar each. I spent $2 on the art cards. I might have actually spent less because I bought them on clearance, I'm pretty sure, but I, I don't recall. They retail for $2 at Ikea nowadays. I spent 19 cents on my photo print of my son. The magnet status board was $4. And everything else was just either gifted or I already had it on hand, except for the metal coat hook, which was $1.25. So other than the wrapping paper and the sewing pins, you'll also need a ruler, pencil, and scissors. Adding the wrapping paper is pretty easy. I started by measuring all the panels in my cubicle, length and width. I added two centimeters, so almost an inch, to each measurement to give it a little wiggle room and to tuck the edges of the paper into the metal seams of my cubicle. When you cut your wrapping paper, first check to make sure that there is not a direction to your print. So example, if you have like cat faces on your wrapping paper or something, you want to make sure that you cut it so that all the cat faces are upright and not on their sides. Flip the paper roll so that you can make markings on the back side of the paper and use a ruler to mark out the cuts that you'll need to make. When hanging the paper, start at the top and pin the sheets into place using the sewing pins. When pushing the sewing pins through, I just kind of tucked it in and out, like so. Try not to wrinkle the paper because the wrinkles will stay forever. You may want to get a coworker to help you hold the paper in place to prevent wrinkling, but I soloed mine without too much trouble. I place pins around the perimeter, spacing each pin about a hand span apart. The more pins you use, the less likely your paper will fall or warp. To save pins, I only used pins on the top, left, and right sides, and the bottom I left kind of free-flowing. You can see in these free-flowing spots that there's a bit of rolling up happening, so I definitely recommend doing all four sides to prevent this. I ended up wrapping all of my interior walls of my cubes and the outside panel. On the small shelf, I lined it with coordinating paper just for fun. I also added a coordinating border to my name tag. I wrapped a little cardboard box in the wrapping paper as well to store my chapstick. As a final touch, I added a metal coat hook that I just tucked into the panel between the fabric and the metal so I wouldn't have to store my coat hanging on the edge of my cube. That also serves to prevent the edge of the paper from lifting from the coat going on and off the edge of the cubicle. I think the most impactful change that I made was the fake wallpaper, but the best feeling that I got from this process was the decluttering that I did removing everything that was never used or enjoyed to make room for the eye to rest. So let's talk about the budget. All in, this cubicle makeover cost me $19.44, give or take, plus taxes. 
two rows of wallpaper, wrapping paper, $4, sewing pins, $3, frames, $5, art cards, $2, a photo print, 19 cents, magnet status board, $4, and everything else was gifted other than the metal coat hook for $1.25. I don't currently have access to this office building, so I can't give you any close-ups, but hopefully these tips will inspire you. Personalizing your office space can make you feel more comfortable at work and bring you some joy. So whether you're working inside or outside of your home right now, I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe. If you've gotten any value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like the video. If you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you in the next Craftcore video. Thanks for watching. This is Craftcore signing off. See you next time.